The act of swimming at its core is a fluid dynamical phenomenon. In this video, we will first address the well-understood act of swimming in environments dominated by inertial forces, and will then hone in on understanding the unique act of achieving locomotion in environments dominated by viscous forces, as shown possible by the swimming motion of microorganisms. Swimming on a human scale can be modeled simply, as depicted here. By the motion of a limb or impeller, such as our arm moving through water in a pool, it is possible to generate thrust, so long as the force of thrust is greater than the drag force acting upon a given body, that body will be able to move through the fluid. How is this thrust force generated? For large scale swimmers, such as fish, aquatic mammals, or humans, thrust is generated by inertial effects. That is to say, when the motion of the limb forces liquid to accelerate behind it, as depicted by the fluid jets moving back and to the left in this image, the displaced fluid will exert a force of equal magnitude and opposite direction onto the body. This results as thrust and the swimmer is propelled forward. The Reynolds number is an important dimensionless number in fluid mechanics, which allows us to determine the relative importance between the inertial forces and the viscous forces in a fluid. We have discussed how the inertial forces of a fluid result from the motion of a body immersed in that fluid. Viscous forces, on the other hand, can be conceptualized as a fluid stickiness. Much like friction in conventional mechanics, viscous forces between a body and a fluid act to oppose the motion of the fluid along the object. The Reynolds number is the ratio of these two types of forces, and as a result, it indicates the relative effect of each force for a given fluid system. In this equation, u is the speed of flow given in meters per second, L is the characteristic length in meters, and nu is the given kinematic viscosity of the fluid in meter squared per second. Most of the large swimmers we have discussed, such as humans, dolphins, sharks, etc., move at high Reynolds numbers, where the inertial forces dominate. That said, there are many different animal species that are able to swim over a large range of Reynolds numbers. In particular, microorganisms such as E. coli or sperm are capable of moving through fluids at low Reynolds numbers, where the viscous forces dominate. As previously mentioned, the way thrust is produced for large Reynolds numbers is well understood. Take the flow field around a small fish, for example. In this image, we can clearly see the vortices that form in the fluid around the tail of the fish as it moves. As the fluid in the vortex is being displaced, it exerts a force of equal magnitude in the opposite direction of the tail's force, which acts to propel the fish forward through the fluid. Microorganisms are capable of swimming and surviving in environments with Reynolds numbers several orders of magnitude smaller than that of fish. However, if we were to scale up the simple act of a microorganism trying to swim in water, the drag force acting upon the microbe would be comparable to what a human would experience if they try to swim through a vat of honey. How then do they accomplish motion without the inertial effects of a fluid? Remember that the small Reynolds number is indicating to us that viscous forces are dominating over inertial ones. Without inertia, the motion of a limb or impeller will not form fluid jets, and thus the standard swimming strategy will not work. This situation is commonly referred to as the scallop theorem, a term coined by American physicist Edward Mills Purcell. The scallop theorem states that a hinged swimmer in a low Reynolds number flow environment will be unable to achieve any net displacement. With the absence of inertial forces, the swimmer is confined by the one degree of freedom in its own motion, and the resulting motion will be reciprocal, as we see here, only moving back and forth and back and forth but never anywhere else. To demonstrate how a scallop could not swim in a low Reynolds number environment, we built a simple one degree of freedom flapping mechanism, a robotic scallop. Our robotic model was constructed using an Arduino control to DC motor to reproduce the reciprocal motion of a hinged swimmer. Two plastic rigid flaps were attached to this motor and then immersed in a highly viscous fluid, as seen in the video. However, the setup is not free to move, so to demonstrate the scallop theorem, we visualize the flow field produced by reciprocal motion of the flaps. In order to visualize the fluid flow, 
The liquid is seeded with light reflecting tracers and illuminated by a thin laser sheet. This technique is known as particle image velocimetry, or PIV for short. As we can see here, the motion of the two flaps at a large Reynolds number results in the formation of vortices. These vortices are the result of inertial forces, which lead to propulsion to move the scallop throughout the fluid, in the same way the motion of our arms or a fish's tail allows for swimming. At small Reynolds numbers, on the other hand, we can see why reciprocal motion occurs. If we observe only one particle throughout a single cycle of motion of the hinged flaps, we see that the particle returns back to its initial position at the end of the cycle. In other words, the flow is reversible in time and no net displacement can be achieved by the swimmer. How then are microorganisms capable of achieving net displacement in such low Reynolds number environments? There are two alternate structures that we can add to a swimmer that will allow it to circumvent the scallop theorem and achieve swimming motion. The first way to accomplish this is to add flexibility to the flapping element. The second way is to use appendices with asymmetric geometry, such as a helix. In the case of microorganisms, the flexible element is the tail-like structure known as the flagellum. The addition of either tail type causes an asymmetry in the motion of the swimmer, and thus an asymmetry in the motion of the surrounding fluid. With that alone, motion can no longer be reciprocal, and the swimmer is able to propel itself forward over time. In other words, if the flagellum was rigid, its oscillating motion would be symmetrical and it would not move forward, just as predicted by the scallop theorem. But if the tail is flexible, locomotion should occur. In order to visualize this, we designed and implemented an experiment in which we immersed magnetic swimmers in a time oscillating magnetic field. This magnetic field was generated using a power supply, Arduino board, relay circuit, and a Hemholtz coil pair. With a rare earth magnet placed inside the swimmer's head, we were able to reproduce swimming motion comparable to that of microorganisms as the head moves back and forth to align with the oscillating magnetic field. Let us compare the motion of a swimmer with a rigid tail versus that of one with a flexible tail. As the heads of both the swimmers oscillate at a frequency of 0.5 Hertz, only the swimmer on the right is capable of achieving net displacement as its tail creates an asymmetry in its swimming motion. To characterize the flexibility of the tail, we can compare the bending forces in the tail and the viscous drag forces. The ratio of these two forces is the so-called sperm number, which is another relevant dimensionless number to study locomotion of organisms with flagella. It is calculated considering the length of the swimmer, the oscillation frequency, the Young's modulus and the second moment inertia of the tail, and the viscous resistant coefficient. A sperm number of order one leads to optimal conditions for forward propulsion. In this video, we showed how the nature of the flow significantly influences the swimming performance of organisms. While large mammals and fish use simple reciprocating fins to produce thrust forces, microorganisms need to use alternative strategies to cope with environments dominated by viscous forces. We showed that the flexible flagella can be used to produce locomotion in small Reynolds number environments. The flexibility of these filaments also influences how fast small organisms can move. These small swimmers have ultimately offered us with exemplary models, which we may look to in order to gain a deeper understanding of our physical world. This video was produced thanks to the generous support of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute.